Today I would like to share some um, a couple of experiential teachings that I received um, over I don't know over the last few years. Um, um, they were memorable because they were very embarrassing, <laughs> and so uh, I still carry them with me. But they were very good teachings. And they've helped me uh, very much uh, to grow and to in my practice very much. So the first one that I wanted to recount happened uh, just a few years ago. I went to um, Coyote Ridge Correctional Center with Venerable Jigme. We were invited for Buddha Day. Um, and of course, it's a special celebration at the correctional centers and the community of practitioners there look forward to that uh, day. And uh, for this particular celebration, they had built a, a mandala with colored grains of rice. And when we got there, uh, the atmosphere was so beautiful. The energy in that room was so beautiful. It was the first thing that I noticed. And they had um, the um, incarcerated uh, practitioners, practitioners had um, drawn uh, images of the Buddhas, uh, such a great talent uh, that they were expressing and their, um, their faith and their just love of the holy beings was just very manifest in the way that they had decorated the room. So it was really a privilege to be there and to go there. And um, as, we, as we entered, we were received with uh, just such warmth and so much yeah, so much uh, kindness. But I, I was a young, very, very young nun. I was just like, I'd just been ordained for a couple of years. I'm still a baby nun, but that was, I was even younger then. And I had this fixation on just being perfect. I'm going to do everything perfectly. I'm not going to make any mistakes. I'm going to give a good visual, and I am just going to be serious and hold on to my precepts here. And of course... <laughs> Of course, one of our precepts is we don't shake hands with men. And so, um, and the, uh, the incarcerated men are also told that uh, when the, the monastics come, they're not supposed to extend their hands to the monastics. They have to wait until the monastics extend their hands if they want to shake hands. And then they can shake hands with the monastics. And so... As I said, um, this was only my second time going to a correctional center, so I was also very nervous to, to start with, and with this uh, mind saying that I want to give a good visual and I want to show like a good practitioner and et cetera, et cetera. So then, of course, the welcoming committee comes to receive us, and um, they come to say hello in a very uh, warm way, and of course, we were told to just bow. So I, I, when they came to say hello, I just I bowed. And I noticed that, well, they bowed, but they went away a bit um, disappointed. And I couldn't understand what happened. I guess I did the right thing. Um, but through the corner of my eye, I saw Venerable Jigme, and she was shaking hands with everybody that was coming. <laughs> and then I said, oh, that's where I went wrong. <laughs> and I felt so... I felt so embarrassed. I just felt like, oh, wow, here I am trying to be this perfect nun, trying to do the right thing, and I end up just not being kind, you know, just not being kind, not, not judging the situation appropriately. And uh, I, felt, I felt really, yeah, I felt really bad. So uh, we had a... After everybody was welcomed, we had uh, an opportunity, each of us, to say a few words. And um, so I apologized. I apologized to uh, uh, the practitioners who were there for my lack of kindness. And um, after a while, when I felt more comfortable and my uh, nervousness subsided, um, the man, the person, came back and, and, uh, and said, yeah, no, don't worry, I, I understand. And um, then I felt more comfortable to extend my hand, and I finally shook hands with this person. And 
He immediately smiled from ear to ear, and his face lit up, and, and that's when I understood what that meant, what that human contact me uh, meant to these men who don't have that, who don't even receive the kindness of a smile. And so for me, the lesson was it's much more important to be kind than perfect. And it's much more important to judge a situation with wisdom and and always choose the side of compassion rather than uh, the chi the uh, the side of looking good and <laughs> giving a good visual. Compassion is much more important. So that was one of the first lessons that I wanted to share. The second lesson was was even more painful. <laughs> It's very painful, but it was very good, and I was very grateful that I received it. Mm. So some of the details are a bit blurry at this point because this happened close to 20 years ago. And um, I believe this was at a time of Geshe Gilson's birthday, and I was traveling from Sacramento to Long Beach to attend the celebration. And I had uh, chosen a gift for Keshela. And I was to spend, I was going down to spend the day. They were having a picnic in some park uh, near the center, near Tuptim Dargilin. And um, so anyway, I, I drove there. And um, I went to the center. And I, I believe there was a line to give presents. And I was behind a couple. Geshe Lai was sitting on a chair, and it seemed like it was on a plat platform that was a bit raised from the ground, so he was sitting there, and he had some assistants ne next to him, and they were helping him with the gifts. And there was this young couple who were um, giving him the present, and he spent a lot of time talking with them about the present, and just very uh, interested in asking them about it. And it was just really, um, yeah, very, very thankful and just very curious about uh, um, what they have brought. And it's very kind to them. It was just very kind to them. And so I was behind them. I was thinking, wow, really? That present? They think that that's good enough for Geshela? Oh, my present is much better. Oh, my God. I spent so much money on my present. Wow. My present, he's really going to like my present. That's nothing. Oof. Gee, how dare they give that to Kishala? When he sees my present, he's just going to want to talk to me. <laughs> my present is so good. Ah, yeah. So I went on for a while just mental arrogance about how good was my present, how expensive my present was. I, I don't even remember what it was right now. I think, <laughs> I think it was a tanka, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so um, anyway, so he finally, the, the, the young couple finally uh, moved, uh, went away. And here I am with my magnificent present that Geshe Lai is just going to love. And, um, and I'm feeling so good about it. And I bow and I hold my present. And I said, happy birthday, Geshe Lai. And I just give my present. And Geshe Lai doesn't even look at me. He doesn't say a word. <laughs> he doesn't take my present. <laughs> And I am frozen like that for so many minutes. And Geshe Lai is not saying anything. <laughs> and then after a while, I'm thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> OK, Geshe Lai doesn't even acknowledge that I am there. And then the assistant comes, and she takes my present. And then I go. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what happened? <laughs> What went wrong? Mm. And then I had some time to think about it. And this was, and I, to this day, I just, I'm so grateful that Geshe La was so kind to teach me this lesson because I've never forgotten it. It was the most beautiful, beautiful lesson that, uh, that he could have taught me without saying a word. <laughs> 
And so, um, so I learned that the important thing about a present is please give it with humility. Please give it with humility. And please give it from your heart. And if you're too arrogant about a present, maybe you shouldn't give that present. <laughs> give something that you are less arrogant about. <laughs> It'll save you, serve you better. And that the best um, attitude that we can have to give a gift to someone is, first of all, remembering the impermanence of the present. You know, the present that I bought is already disintegrating by the time that I gave it and will continue to disintegrate, you know. So it's definitely not the perfect present. It never was and never will be. And also remembering that, you know, it's the emptiness of the three spheres, the emptiness of the act of giving a present, the emptiness of the giver and the emptiness of the receiver. That is the best uh, attitude with which to give a present. And I remember that henceforth, every time I was going to make an offering, I had to prepare my mind. And if, I was, it was a, if, we, if it was an offering of money, I would have to say, this is paper. These have no intrinsic value whatsoever. I don't care if it's a dollar, 20, 50, 100. This is just paper. And I had to prepare my mind before giving that offering to make sure that I didn't have that same mental state that I had when I gave that present to, uh, to Geshe-la. So this is just a piece of paper. It doesn't have any intrinsic value. And uh, you know, there is no, there's no intrinsic giving. There's no intrinsic giver or intrinsic receiver. And so I, Every time that I wanted to give something, I had to do this, this mental exercise. And, and that was the gift that Geshe-la gave me. So instead of me giving him a gift, he gave me a gift. So that's the beauty of our teachers. They're always giving. So. Thank you. <laughs>